In this video, we're going to make a very simple window to receive input from the player. This is great, for example, for a high score table in order to receive the player name, or in a store to input the number of objects to buy. It will support passing a string with the valid characters and trigger an action on OK or Cancel. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is what we want to create. We have our very simple input window, and we can write on it only with certain valid characters and click OK or Cancel. So when we do click any of those buttons, we get a nice callback, so hit Cancel, there you go, there's our callback. Put a number, hit OK, and there you go, there's our callback. One example of this in use is over here we have a nice high score table. This was actually created in a previous video, so check that out if you want to know how the high score table works. And over here we have a button in order to submit a score, so click on it, and there you go, there's the nice input window asking for the score. So in here I can only input numbers, so if I try to press a character, yep, I cannot press any characters, I cannot input any letters. However, I can put a score, so let's put, then I press enter, and there you go, now it's asking me for my player name. And now here it's limited only to capital letters and just three characters. So if I put numbers, it doesn't work. I have to put my three uppercase letters. Now I hit OK. And there you go, there's our updated score showing up on the table. All right, so this is our goal, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in our starting scene. It's empty, all we have is a background texture. And over here the UI is set up, just a basic UI setup with a camera and a canvas. If you want to see how I set up my UI, check out the link in the description. So in here, let's begin by making our input window visual. So we're going to start off, make a new game object, call it our UI input window. Then inside, let's add a UI image for our background. And now let's make our input field, so a new UI input field. Okay, here it is. This is the main component that we're going to use in order to receive input from the player. Okay, so far so good. Now let's add a title text object to make it look like a UI window. The title will also be customizable. And now finally, let's just make two buttons, one for the OK and for the Cancel. OK, we have the buttons. Now, in order to make the buttons work, I'm going to use the button UI component from the CodeMonkey Utilities, which, as always, you can grab for free from UntyCodeMonkey.com. You are free to make your own button script if you want, but this one is helpful since it already has a bunch of features, like, for example, some hover behavior. All right, so this is pretty much our UI visual setup. We have a title, an input field, and two buttons. Now it's set up in here. We have our background, our input field, then the title background, then the title text. Then we have each button which contains an image for the button background and the button text. And if we run our scene, there you go, this is how it looks like. So we have the input right there. Okay, great. Now let's get to work on the code. Over here on the scripts folder, let's create a new C-sharp script and call this the UI input window. Drag it onto our window, all right, and open. Okay, so here let's begin by making the window show and hide. All right, so here it is, very simple. We just set the game object to active as true or false. That shows or hides our window. And then on our private void awake, let's start off hidden. All right, so far so good. Now let's set our scene up for testing. So back here in the editor on the canvas, let's make a new game object, call it our UI testing. 
and in here let's just make a button which is going to pop up our window so duplicate this button put it on the UI testing let's call this the submit score button since that's what we're trying to test and in here submit score all right there it is very simple now let's make our testing script so in new C sharp script drag it onto the game object and in here let's get the reference to our input window And then let's go to our private void start. And here let's set our button in order to show our window. All right, so that's it. So when we click on our submit score button, we're going to run our input window show. Now in here in the editor, all we need to do is go into our UI testing and drag our input window reference. All right, let's test. And okay, here we are, and yep, the window is hidden. Now I click on the button, and there you go, there's our nice window. Awesome. Okay, so now we have our input window showing and hiding with a testing script in order to test it. So now let's deal with the actual input code. Over here on awake, let's grab reference to our input field, the buttons, and our title text. All right, we have all the fields that we need. And now down here on the show function, let's receive the title and the input text that we want by default. And we simply set both of them. All right, that should do it. Now back into testing. Then here we need to call show with some parameters. So let's pass in our test title and a random string. All right, let's see. Okay, here we are, it's hidden, click. And yep, there you go, there's our nice test title and our nice input string, awesome. Okay, now let's make our two buttons work. So in order to define how our buttons are going to work over here on the show function, let's receive two actions. Now an action is inside using system an action is just a simple delegate that returns null, and a delegate, in case you don't know, is just a way to store a function in a variable. So here in the show, let's receive just a simple action for our onCancel function, and let's receive an action with a string parameter for our onOK action. This is how we're going to get callbacks from our input window. And then here we can simply use these actions directly on our buttons. So for the OK button on the click function, we simply set it to call the on OK, and we pass in the current input field dot text. All right, it's that simple, but we also want the window to hide itself. So let's first call hide, and then we call the on OK, and then for the cancel button, do the same thing. We call hide, and then we call on cancel. All right, that should do it. So we now have our function, which receives an action on cancel and one on OK. So back in our testing, here let's add our callback. So first the on cancel, and then we have the on OK. The on OK takes a parameter, so a string input text. OK, to test it out, let's spawn a pop-up. I'm going to use the CM debug class from the utilities in order to trigger a text pop-up on the mouse position. And this one, let's say cancel. And this one, let's say OK. All right, that should do it. Let's test. OK, here we are, and the window is hidden. All right, click, and there's our nice window. OK, now click cancel. And there you go, there's our cancel, and the window was hidden. Now show it again. Now click OK, and there you go, OK, and it received the input. So change the input to something else. Click OK, and yep, there you go. It constantly does correctly. So we have all our callbacks correctly working. Awesome. So now with this working, it's time to validate our input. So here on the show function, 
let's receive a string for our valid characters. So these are the only characters that we can input on this input field. So the way we validate is by going into the input field. And here we have a field for on validate input. Here is the delegate on that field. We have a text, char index, and added character. And now here in this function, we validate our character. So let's make a proper function for that down here. A private, we're going to return a character and let's call it validate char. And here we receive a string for our valid characters and then the character that we want to add. So in here, the code is very simple. We just go into our valid character string and we do a index of our added character. And if the index is not minus one, that means that character has been found inside our valid character. So the character is valid. So we return our added character. And if not, then the character is invalid. So we return an empty character. All right, so that's it. That's our function. We pass in the valid characters and our character and it's either valid or invalid. So we can go up here and we use this. All right, so that's it. We make sure that every character typed is inside our valid character string. So now let's go into our testing code. And in here, for example, let's try making it only valid for numbers. So for the valid characters, I'm going to pass all the numbers. And by default, let's pass in nothing. And now let's test. Okay, here's the window. Now I try to press a normal letter. And yep, there you go. Nothing is happening. Nothing is inputting. Now I put a number. And there you go, I can write a number, but I cannot write characters. So we can now selectively decide which character should be allowed on our input field. Awesome. Now one small thing, let's add a number of max characters. So in here, very simple, we just receive an int. Let's call it our character limit. And then we simply set the input field dot character limit to be our character limit. So here, let's try just three characters and let's see. Okay, here we are, try one, two, three, and yep, I can't type anymore. Okay, great. Now another thing, let's add our keyboard input for the okay and cancel. So we're here on the input window, let's also make a private void update. And in here, let's do a if input and get key down of the key code return or input get key down of the keypad enter. All right, so if we hit the return or the keypad enter, then we want to simulate a OK. So we can go into the OK button and manually trigger the click function and do the same thing for the cancel. All right, so we now have keyboard support. Let's try. OK, here we are. Let's first press escape. And there you go. There's the cancel. Now let's input something and press enter. And there you go, we have our nice input being supported with the escape and enter keys. All right, great. Okay, so now our input field is pretty much done. We can select which characters are valid, how many we can write, and get callbacks on OK or Cancel. Now let's polish this up a bit. First, let's make our class easy to use by making it a singleton. So over here, I added a static instance field, and it gets set on our wake. And now in here, instead of having these functions public, let's make them private. And instead, we're going to expose the static versions. All right, that should do it. So now if we go back into our testing, we no longer need to pass around a reference to our UI input window, but rather we can use the static function instead. Just like that. All right, so this makes it much easier in order to use our input window anywhere in our code. So let's see, here we are, and yep, everything still works. I can still click, okay, cancel, and everything. Okay, great. Now let's add a UI blocker. So 
So over here, I've made a new UI game object stretch to occupy everything. And it's just a simple black image. What this does is it helps us block. So for example, we're going to put the input window, then the blocker and then the testing. That way, when the input window is active, we can no longer click the behind button. So to do that, let's make a simple script. All right, so here it is. I made it a singleton, exactly like the input window. And now here on the show, I'm also going to do something interesting, which is go into our transform and call set as last sibling. This will put it at the end of the hierarchy, which in the UI means it will show up on top of everything else. So let's go into our testing. And here before we show our window, let's also go into the UI blocker and call show. Okay, let's see. Okay, here we are, we can see the button and the blocker is not active. And now let's click. And yep, the blocker showed up. And as you can see, if we pause, it went right to the end. So it's on top of everything else. So it means we are correctly blocking our submit score button. However, we are also blocking our input. So let's fix that. Here on the input window on our show, let's do the same thing. Call transform set as last sibling. Okay, here we are, now click that. Now that button is no longer clickable, but these two are. Okay, great. So now let's set things up in order to first input a score and then a name. So on our testing, let's look at this code. So first we call the UI blocker, okay. Then we call show static and first we want to input the score. And the score is only numbers, but let's put a maximum of 10 characters. Now, when we click on the cancel, then we're not going to do anything. So just call the UI blocker in order to hide it. However, when we click on OK, over here we have the score text. So with our score, we want to show the input again, but now for the name. So let's again call our UI input window. And now we want the player name. For the valid characters in here, let's make the player only use uppercase characters. Now for the character limit, let's make it only three characters long. And now for the functions. So if we hit cancel, again, we do nothing. So let's just hide the UI blocker. However, if we hit OK, Let's hide the UI blocker. And then in here, we have our name and score. All right, that should do it. So as you can see, we have our input window. First, grab the score. When we click OK, then we get another input window asking for the player name. Let's see. OK, here you are. Click Submit. And yep, now it's asking for my score. And in here, I can only type numbers. If I try to put letters, it doesn't work. All right, so let's put a score. Now, if I click Cancel or press Escape, there you go, nothing happens, it goes back. Okay, great, so let's do it and put a score. Now let's press okay. And okay, now it's asking me for the player name. And here again, I cannot put lowercase, I cannot put numbers, I can only put capital letters. So put a name and I can only put three characters and hit okay. And there you go, there's our name and our score. All right, so everything is working great, awesome. Now one thing we can still improve is to make it easier to input numbers. So on the input window over here, we have our show. Okay, works great. However, let's make another version that deals with ints automatically. So you make a public static boy show static, just the same. We receive a string for the title string. And then instead of receiving a string for the input string, let's receive an int for our default int value. Then the characters, we're going to automatically make it. For the character limit the same, and then we're going to have an action for the on cancel and an action which will take a int parameter for our on OK. So in here, what we do is call instance.show, going to pass in the title string, then let's pass in the default int dot to string. Then for the valid characters, let's pass in just numbers. And now here on the on OK is where things get interesting. So in here, let's try to automatically parse our string.
All right, so here it is, a much more simplified version in order to deal with an input window that only receives numbers. So in here, when we receive a string for our input text, we try to parse it. Parsing is converting a string into an int if possible. So if it is possible, we call on OK with our parsed int. And if it's not possible to parse it, then we call on OK with the default. So now in order to see how useful this is, let's go back into our testing. And here for the first one, we just want the score. So let's use that version instead. So in here we pass in the default int and the default on the score, let's say it's zero. And then we just need to pass in the on cancel and the on okay, except the on okay, instead of receiving the score text, receives an int for our score. All right, so there it is. We made a very nice helper function in order to help us input only integers. So with that done, now let's apply everything to our high score table. Okay, here it is the high score table. Again, this was fully created from scratch in a previous video, so check the link in the description to see how it was made. And now we're going to use the input window in order to add another score to our table. So over here, I'm simply going to add a serialized field for our high score table. And then here, when we have the name and the score, just call add high score entry, pass in the score and our name. All right, that should do it. Let's test. Okay, here we are with our high score table and a bunch of scores. Now let's click submit score. Now let's make sure we are at number one. Okay, now a player name. Okay, and there you go. There's our new high score added to the top of the table. So we can add any score we want. Press OK, and there you go. We are now receiving our input from the player and adding it into our nice high score table. Right, awesome. So here you have a very nice and simple, but also very versatile input window. As you saw, we can easily limit the input characters in order to receive only numbers or a certain type of letters. The way we set up our code also makes this class very easy to use and add to your own projects. So go ahead and implement this in your own game and start asking your players for input. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time!